The Avengers has all of the people, all of the superheroes there, but we're not following each of them separately in all the things that they're doing, right? We may be following them as a group and then following one or two of them who may be doing something separately. And the others are just there for support in this particular movie. Do writers get confused with subplot versus plot? How do we know the difference? Yeah, I'm going to assume that if you're saying subplot, that you mean different storylines. And that's the way that I kind of like to talk about it. And I don't think I've seen too many people get confused with it, but not really knowing how to use them and make them impactful for each other. So when I describe sub characters, I describe them as characters who are helping or hindering the protagonist's goal. We only care about these sub characters because they are pushing the A story forward. That doesn't mean that those characters don't also have their own storylines because they're people and they should be doing things other than walking around behind your protagonist all day, right? However, the point of their stories is to eventually crash into the A story, eventually complicate the A story, eventually help the A story. Even if they look like they're going this for this way, at some point, they're gonna, you know, connect. And so I think some people miss that and they will then start to write an entirely different story for the B story that has absolutely nothing to do with the A story. And now we're watching these two stories go, but they're not connected, right? So going back to our family reunion, if I were to come to your family reunion, I expect to meet your cousins, not your neighbor's cousins. So those sub characters are here because they're important to this protagonist. They're not other random people in the world. Those random people weren't invited to the barbecue, <laughs> right? The people who are here are the people who are um, helping or hurting, informing, helping, complicating what's going on with the protagonist. So we only care about them because of their proxy, you know, their proximity to the protagonist. And so I think people don't understand that. And they just say, oh, uh, my subplot or my B story is just another story. And it's like, no. Thematically, they tie. Plot-wise, they tie. Something about them connects them all. And uh, a great example of that is Crash, the movie yes. Crash, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are 50 million main characters, but they're all dealing with the same kind of themes and they all eventually connect, right? So spoiler alert, they all eventually get you to this dead kid who is the brother of one of those people who was killed by one of the other people, right? So it all starts to connect. When we first start to watch it, we're like, why do we need to be following all these people? What is, what is going on? But it's because their world is smaller than we think it is. They are all in the same world and they will all affect that A story. So in that particular uh, film, I haven't seen it in a little while, but I wouldn't say there's a standout protagonist unless we'll say it's Don Cheadle's character who is the detective, maybe. But instead, it seems like we just have a lot of main characters and they each have their own storylines, right? But the A plot is what happened to this, this boy because we open up with learning that someone died. Um, so the main plot is what happened to this boy. And then we go into all of these other stories to eventually come back to, oh, that's what happened. But then beyond that, um, the themes are about how we're all just people regardless of our differences. So it talks a lot about race and religion and all these other things. And so each of those groups of people is dealing with that theme on their own level. So that still connects them. They're, they're not random stories that are being told. They're all connected. So if people can understand that about subplot or like I like to call them storylines or A story, B story, C story, E story, D story, however many storylines you're gonna have, they all have to connect and they all have to push your A story forward. Even if when they first start, it seems like it has nothing to do with that. Eventually, it all has to come back to this one thing or at least thematically tie. And the theme is usually, again, going to be shown in your A story. <laughs> so that means all of the other storylines are still going to thematically tie into them. Well, let's take this family barbecue. Mm -hmm. So let's say everybody's happy, everything's wonderful. And then there's another scene where there's a man in maybe a beat up vehicle who's delivering something and it's his personal vehicle and he's stressing out he's in traffic and you know people are cutting him off whatever and he's trying to be a decent driver but he finally gets there and he's sweating and he unloads this cake for this barbecue and when he delivers it 
he finds out that one of the children there, that's actually his kid. Mm -hmm. And the wife and he have been estranged for years. Mm -hmm. And now this happy moment is awful because all the memories have come back and he hasn't seen his son in years mm -hmm. because it was too it was too difficult. Yeah. And so now he's this subplot has now come into the main plot. Exactly. Okay. I get exactly. it. Okay. And so then how so then how long does this sub character stay mm -hmm. at that barbecue? Yeah. It or, depends on uh -huh. your story. Mm -hmm. Going back to what's the goal? Is the goal for him to have the realization of this was my family? Because if so, then that's the end of the movie. Everything got us to the moment that he arrived, right? If the story is about working on getting my family back or working on rekindling with my son or you know whatever that was, then it could be the inciting incident that he shows up with the cake it could be the midpoint that he shows up with the cake, right? So we've been seeing him, he had his goal, I need to deliver this cake. We're watching up until the midpoint, everything that he's trying to do to deliver the cake. I don't know what's happening with the other family, but they have their own goals and whatever they're doing, preparing for the barbecue, whatever they're doing, right? Or attending the barbecue and dealing with family drama because they're already talking about her ex-husband and blah, 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 you know, they're, that kind of thing. Um, so when he shows up at the midpoint, now things are redirected, right? So what's happening for the rest of the time? Is it stay here and work it out? Because this is the scene, right? It's it's pandemic, so people aren't doing a lot of different locations and blah, blah, blah. So do we stay here and work out the whole thing? Or does that end the barbecue scene and now we go into the rest of life as he's trying to re rekindle the relationship? So depending upon what that goal is, then you know how long this barbecue thing needs to happen or this journey to the barbecue in the first place. And then what scenes we need after that for him to actually reach his goal. And if you've done your work of making the goal relevant while he's preparing this cake, while he's driving through traffic, while he's doing blah, 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 we will learn that there is a loneliness there. We will learn that there is a like maybe we don't get want to give it away that he lost his child, you know, or whatever that stuff is. But we're getting some information to know that there's something he's missing, something that he's needing, something he's given up on. Maybe it's because people are calling as he's driving and he's like, I don't want to talk about it, man, you know, blah, 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 whatever that is. We'll start to know something else is going on here. So that when he arrives with that cake and he gets out of the car and stops short, yeah, no one has to say anything. <laughs> right. We know. Because we've been given the evidence that something's going on with him and we've been given the evidence at the barbecue as she's been setting up and, oh, he's a this and he's a that and blah, blah, blah. We've been hearing the stuff. It hasn't been like, you know, the A story because it wasn't yet. But now that these two things have collided, they'll make one storyline and we'll go on from there. How many subplots should a movie have or a TV show have? Yeah, so there isn't necessarily a set amount. But what I will say is, your A story is going to be in every single one of your acts, fully out. Some movies will only have an A story. Um, if you have a B story, it's now still all of the same amount of beats, but shorter, right? So if your A story is this long, your B story might be that long. Your C story and D story and E story all get shorter, but they're still full storylines, which means they have their own goals, and their own complications, climaxes, etc. In a television show, you're usually only going to have maybe about three per episode, even if you have six or seven characters. Like if you watch This Is Us, Something's going to be going on with one of the big three. Something's going to be going on with mom and dad in the past. And then we may also be watching something else, maybe. Um, in a show like Brothers and Sisters, there were five kids and a mom. So maybe we're definitely going to have at least three storylines, but there might be a fourth small nugget of something that's giving us breadcrumbs from something bigger that's going to happen you know, down the road. Um, what I will say is, in features, it's good to have at least more than one storyline depending on the genre. Most horror movies have one storyline. Stay alive protagonist. That's it. They're also usually only 75 minutes long. So we don't really have time to be following up and other people and whatever else is going on. We're just trying to stay in this one little thing. 
But other than that, um, it's good to have a B story because you want to break up the monotony of the A story. Because again, once we get into the second act, it's about reaching that goal. And if I'm just, if every single page is about what this one person is doing, that can become monotonous, right? It becomes like get there or don't get there. You know, we start to get a little impatient. So if you have something to break it up with another storyline, another full storyline, then that can kind of help keep the uh, pacing up. You know, I've seen it a lot in love stories. A lot of love stories will just have the love. But how much can we take of together, not together, together, not together, together, not together. It's like, do they have anything else that they can be doing? You know, like what's going on in their personal lives that can be a B and a C story? <laughs> you know what I mean? What's going on with mom that, th that can thematically tie to what's happening with them that we can be watching? Because if not, then we can start to get disinterested by the redundancy because it's a relationship. How much can they really go through? Even if it's a new piece of conflict, it still ends in the same thing, be together or don't, right? So if we keep watching them do this, for 40 minutes. I mean, that we need to break that up a little bit. So it's always good to have another. But in general, there isn't a standard. I think that you can figure out if you've, if you've um, gotten too many of them, if things start to get a little messy and you can't really follow the storylines. Um, like even if you look at a Marvel film, uh, at the Avengers, right? The Avengers has all of the people, all of the superheroes there. But we're not following each of them separately in all the things that they're doing, right? We may be following them as a group and then following one or two of them who may be doing something separately. And the others are just there for support in this particular movie. And that's okay. So you want to definitely make sure that it doesn't become too much. Like if you look at, um, at Crash, that was, I don't know how many people that was, but that was a lot of storylines. But they were simple enough, right? Simple and thematic. So each time we came to them, we were kind of mirroring whatever just happened with the other group of people on their side of town or getting them closer to meeting one of the other group of people. So it worked for them. So that's why, again, it's everything is going to come down to what's best for your story. So you have to be paying attention to that pacing. And am I spending enough time to understand what the storyline is? Or am I just dropping a couple of people every now and again, which now confuses us? So instead of it breaking up the monotony, it's confusing us and we have more questions. So you just have to, again, find another pair of eyes if you can't figure it out, right? Hire a script consultant like myself. There are plenty of us out there. Or have someone who understands story, at least, to read it to see how it's making them feel and what information they're missing. So with this family barbecue story, if we have this dad that's now bringing this cake and now the rest of the family is just stunned that he's doing this job and that he's there and that he's actually shown himself, you know, maybe there were calls that say, don't come by anymore, who knows what happened. Um, if we were to add another character, it would somehow have to make it in. It can't just be the random guy at the bar that he goes, right. pounds a drink and he goes, hey man, slow down, what's wrong? And, oh, uh, you know, I, I can't talk about it. it. Somehow that guy at the bar has to be part of the story. Mm -hmm. He can't somehow, just be there. I mean, again, Every sub character has their own role to play. Meeting a guy in a bar doesn't have to become a storyline. Okay. That sub character can just be the person in the bar that had some kind of conversation with our actual character that motivated or changed them to go do something. Ah, uh, right? okay. So okay. that person doesn't have to become a storyline. That person can just be a guy in the bar who said whatever, but whatever it is he said had to have changed our character. Because if not, then we don't need this conversation. We don't need this bar. We don't need this location. We need to pay for these people <laughs> or, any of, or any of that, right? Right, okay. So, mm -hmm. that, so that's going to be the difference. But if I watched Guy at Bar at home and then watched Guy at Bar get to the bar, then I watched Guy at Bar drive away from the bar, then now I'm asking myself, okay, what does Guy at Bar have to do with any of this, right? Because now wow. I'm watching their life from their point of view. So... Does Guy from Bar end up being her new boyfriend? Right? So he didn't know that when they were sitting next to each other, these two men, when they're talking about the situation. And Guy at Bar is like, you should go get your family back. <laughs> right? And now Guy with Cake shows up at the barbecue. And then Guy with bar, a guy from the bar drives up. What are you doing here? Getting my family back. Oh, that's my girl. Now we've got something going on. Now these storylines are connecting. I was actually thinking that the guy at the bar would be a negative 
reflection of the of the protagonist that he didn't want to ever become and so mm -hmm. he sees himself in that guy at the bar mm -hmm. and he go and the guy at the bar is drunk and he's like yeah my ex-wife she's a you know what and you know i just you know whatever i i i, I walked out a long time ago and and then hey johnny give me another bourbon or whatever and then he sees like i could become that man right. and i don't want to be that mm -hmm. and that straightens him out yep and that so in that case then he's just a sub character Okay. He doesn't have his own storyline. Okay, so he's know? not a subplot story. Yeah, he's okay. not a subplot. He's just a subcharacter. He's just a character who's helping to push the story forward by his interaction with this guy. But a storyline would mean that the guy at the bar has his own goals and we're following him trying to achieve those goals too. Uh -huh. And then eventually they align with what everybody else has going on. I see. Okay, so he's a catalyst character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. interesting. Just coming in to push you in one direction or the other. Because again, if not, then we don't need him. Right. We don't need a guy who's just at the bar being belligerent. That that belligerence should affect our guy in some kind of way. Because if not, then we don't need that.